Invalid's home number four near St. Petersburg is one of the better orphanages. The caregivers do their best, but the children are still left on their own for hours on end. Volunteers help care for the children, volunteers like Johanna Lorenz of Germany. She does what she can, but she'd like to do more. If you interact with the children several times a week, you can tell that they become a bit more alert and take in more of their surroundings. Home number four dates back to the Soviet era. It houses nearly 400 children. For 10 years now, Natalia Knyatseva has been coordinating the volunteers from Germany. She says the volunteers often take better care of the children. Russia still has a way to go. Here, an invalid isn't seen as a complete person. There are many who think the children here get too much care. We often hear things like, why do this? The main thing is, they're out of sight, out of mind. Images from a children's home near Moscow. Little Vitaly has Down syndrome. His mother gave him up as soon as he was born. The Moyers from Georgia and the United States wanted to adopt him. But President Putin's government has banned all adoptions by American couples. The official reason given was that children adopted from Russia had been abused. The Moyers have turned to Valery Panushkin for support. He's championed the cause of children with disabilities for years. We want to help their children and we're here to love their their child. I mean, we, we want to do what's best for him. And our, our hope is that they do too, which is not to leave him in an orphanage. Vitaly would become part of a big family in the U.S. The Moors already have three children. Children like Vitaly rarely find adoptive parents within Russia. The children generally stay in these homes until they turn 17. And then they automatically go to a psychiatric hospital for adults. Or, in plain language, they go to a madhouse. One of the very few orphans who made it out of the system is Svetlana Brudavikova. Now at age 24, she's going back to finish school. Her story was told by the state-run television channel. Her mother died of alcoholism when Svetlana was just seven. She couldn't keep up in school, so the authorities put her in a home for the mentally disabled and later in a psychiatric hospital. When I was put in that home, it was even worse than in an orphanage. So I ran away again. I even wanted to hide out in the forest, just so I wouldn't have to live there anymore. Few of the more than 600,000 children in Russia's orphanages will have any real chance in life. Many end up living in the streets and turning to petty crime. The ban on adoptions to the United States has triggered controversy within Russia. The adoption ban is widely seen as political, and the children bear the brunt. The Kremlin's child welfare commissioner, Pavel Astakov, has repeatedly denied such allegations. He insists the law is for the good of the children and future generations. In my view, this step was long overdue in Russia. We don't always have to burn all our bridges behind us before we can move forward. It was a roundabout way of saying that Russia has to learn to take better care of its orphans. But the staff of St. Petersburg Home Number 4 reacted with outrage. They say they've long been trying to improve the lives of the children in their care.
The ban on adoptions from the United States will all but kill any hope of a better life for many of these children. The caregivers are frustrated. Sometimes I think maybe there's a clever political motive behind this law. If it puts all these problems on the table, maybe something will start happening. And things will improve step by step. Even if it is a barbaric way to go about it. Some American families intend to take the ban of U.S. adoptions to the European Court of Human Rights in the name of the children they would have made their own. Children need a caring, nurturing environment, and there are families willing and able to provide one.